Well, we're very fortunate to have a chef and author in our house, Vikram Vij. Uh, his book is called The Chef's One-Way Ticket to Canada with Indian Spices in His Suitcase. There it is right there. The man is beside me. Mr. Vish, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Namaste. Well, thank you very much. I'm very excited to have you here. Now, let's, this is an amazing a memoir, your whole life story. But it, I, I was reading a part of it where it suggested you actually didn't want to be a chef. You want to be a big actor, a big shot. Well, you know, in India, everybody has a dream okay. that they're going to become a Bollywood actor. Yes. So you can run around the trees <laughs> and you can laugh and yeah. you know, you're going to have the most beautiful person that's your partner sure. and you're going to have your ups and downs. But everything like a Bollywood movie would end beautifully yeah. into rich and famous. Right. And then my father sat me down one day and says, no son of mine is becoming an actor. Okay. So I was like, well, what do I do? Right. I needed to channelize my energies and my love, what I had. So I said, let me become a chef. Because at the end of the day, at 5.30 when the curtain is drawn and the restaurant opens, we are out there performing. Sure. Making sure the dishes are well, make sure the service is well, make sure people feel welcomed and loved. And that's what we did. So I went actually to Austria to become a chef and um, studied there for three years. Didn't speak a word of German, but I managed to learn it by finding myself a really girl, quick girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> that sure helps. Now, you know, must be a different styles of cooking going from India to now Austria. That must have been not even the language or the lifestyle or where you're living, but just the whole idea of cooking in a different way. Well, Imagine this, you come from India where there is like millions and millions of people, sure. right? There's no space called your own space. Like even if you're in an elevator, you're crowded completely. Sure. And you go to Austria where there's like hardly anybody on the roads. I remember the first day thinking, what's wrong with these people? Why is nobody here? Like there's so <laughs> much space out here. Sure. But again, not only is the language, the food. Okay. I remember first day, they, had, they wanted to welcome all the young students that had come. So big feast was on a wooden platter was this beef tongue that had been lightly boiled and little cornichons and little onions a little mustard and a little bit of the rye bread yeah and i'm an indian <laughs> hindu on top of it sure. never has touched beef before <laughs> leave alone having this beef tongue that looks really <laughs> phallicky yeah. on a platter like oh my god i remember bought myself some wonder bread yes yeah Mom had given me a little bit of chilies, pickles. Sure. I ate that and ate the whole loaf of bread because I was so hungry. <laughs> Over and time, my stomach was upset the next day. Oh, I'm sure. I was. ate a can of chili pickles. <laughs> Over time, did you learn to appreciate the, the different cuisine? Absolutely. One of my favorite things to make now oh, is really? French food, is okay. the German okay. food. I mean, I make killer schnitzels, and I make, I know, I love making, you know, boiled beef tongue and, and crisping it up and doing all that stuff. But again, you're, if you're not used to it, you know, you, you grew up for 19 years in India, you know, ho cooked food by your mother, you know, love going to the bazaars, picking up things, and then suddenly you have to come and make your own breakfast and your own lunch. I mean, it was extremely tough. I'll be honest with you, for the first six months, I thought I was going to go back. And I didn't think, uh, I was 19. 19 at that time. And I thought I was going to go back, and I was like, ah, I can't. I, I, was, I lived a beautiful life, sure. and the last thing I wanted was, but the turmoil in India was so strong mm -hmm. that having, go back, having to go back to India and to try to survive there would, would have been that I would have been at the bottom of the totem pole. Okay. And I, I didn't know whether I was going to survive in India okay. because just the sheer population and mass is so much that it's tough to make, break through there. Okay, so instead of going back to India, you actually came about four hours down the road from Edmonton to Banff. How did that haul come and what were you doing there? Well, so one, obviously I finished school mm -hmm. and I was working at this really fancy hotel and the gentleman who was the manager of the Banff Springs Hotel, Ivor Petrak, who was an immigrant himself from Czechoslovakia, was working uh, and having dinner at a hotel post where I was working. Okay. And so <clears throat> he wanted to have something spicy. Being Hungarian, wanted goulash, something spicy. I was the only token brown guy in the kitchen. <laughs> the maitre d' says, you should make something spicy for him. Sure. You know, I happen to have some spices in my suitcase from, from my mother. I pulled the spices out. I made him this delicious, you know, sauteed some onions and ginger, and I made a gulash soup, which was a little spicier. Yeah. And so he finishes up, and they call me and say, he wants to talk to you. And I'm like, 
did I get fired because maybe I really, you know, hurt his yeah. feelings or some other body part? Yes, yeah. And um, <laughs> sure enough, he said, you know, people like you should come to this great country called Canada yeah. because here you can actually be who you are okay. and not have to change yourself. You can, you know, speak the language, you know, it's, it's a great nation and, and you come out here. And I was like, why would I go to Canada? Like, of all the places. Yeah. I mean, we all we heard in Austria was they eat hamburgers and they drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was the image, uh, okay. as far as culinary sure. image was concerned, in 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 yeah. um, in Austria. So, but then I just somewhere in my mind, it was like I need to just apply. Yeah. So I applied to him, sending my resume and all the recommendation yeah. letters and everything else. And literally six weeks later, I got a small envelope from the Bam Springs Hotel, and there was a one-way ticket <laughs> and a six-month visa to come to work at the Bam Springs Hotel. And he knew as an immigrant that if once you come to Canada and you watch and you come and work at the Bam Springs Hotel, yeah. chances of you wanting to go back are like zero, like right. zilch. Yeah. So he was very, very nice and very friendly. And I stayed, and I have ever since Alberta, Calgary, Edmonton has had such a huge soft spot for me yeah. because my actual culinary journey started in this province. Well, we're lucky to have you because the food is amazing. Now, you know, since that time, since that first trip over, you've opened many, many restaurants, become very, very successful. You know, did, was that a hard leap forward and having the courage to say, you know what, yeah, people are going to like me on my own instead of me under a, an umbrella of this restaurant, this hotel? You know. When you, when you come as an immigrant to any country and you get uprooted from where you are, the best thing you can do is create your own identity. Okay. So be who you are. So opening up a restaurant was to create an own identity, to create modern Indian food, to create something that was different. I mean, it's a cuisine that is so deep in its spices and its culture and its heritage. And just to be tucked under the carpet and never actually given the, the attention or the love is was wrong. I, I find it wrong. So as somebody who almost became an unappointed ambassador of India when I came, I was like, I want to showcase that my cuisine is as complex and as delicate as the French and the Italian or the Californian cuisine was. Mm -hmm. And that has been my crusade. That has been my calling all my life is to just bring awareness to this. So that even the book talks about food as such far more than it just talks about, um, you know, what actually happened. It's not, the book is my journey, mm. no question about it, but it is also to bring awareness to a cuisine and the culture. Now, you know, Canadian cuisine is, is a mishmash. There's a bunch of different things going on. Do you, Beautiful. Do you, and that's what I think makes it so great. We're very lucky. So true. Do we get that respect internationally uh, here uh, for the different texture that is Canadian cuisine? Because it's, as you mentioned, it's not just the tongue on the plate, as you might see in Austria. You know, we, we are a much younger culinary destination. Okay. Right? We are, as Canada, we have. But we are a culinary destination, and it's because... We have an ocean that produces great sustainable s seafood. We have our farmers and purveyors that produce great, you know, vegetables and lentils and chickpeas and canola, you name it, across the nation. So we are a great country that has great uh, produce. And we have great wine regions. Mm -hmm. I mean, three of the most common denominators that uh, any country needs to be a great culinary destination. And specifically the chefs right now, whether you're in Edmonton or Calgary or Toronto or, or Montreal or in Vancouver, the chefs are young, they're vibrant, they want to go out, they want to go out and learn. So they're going out, learning, honing their skills and then coming back to their cities and creating great cuisines. That, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Okay. The point here is consumers should understand that and respect that and go out and support these chefs and restaurant owners and wines and these farmers and purveyors so that they can support themselves and have great families. Awesome. Well, the book's called uh, Chef's One Way Ticket to Canada with Indian Spices in a Suitcase. That's literally what happened. And we can hear more of these tonight with you down at uh, Southgate Centre at uh, Centre Court at 7 p.m. I could talk to you all night. i got to get over there after the show to hear more of these stories. It'll be my pleasure, and it'll be a fun conversation one-on-one. -on -one. And what I want people to understand is you can ask me anything. I'm like an open book. Yeah. I have nothing to hide. I, you know, I, I, I'm here to talk to you and explain to you. And maybe there are issues that all of us have. Look, at the end of the day, every
everybody wants to express themselves. Okay. Right? You want to dan dance to your own tunes. Being an entrepreneur, working for somebody else, you still want to create your own mark. We want to leave legacies. Mm -hmm. Human beings are social people. Let's have this conversation then. I love it.